around the world. We begin today's show in Syria, where protests have been intensifying in the southern city of Dara. At least 15 people died on Wednesday, a day that began with Syrian soldiers and plainclothes security agents raiding a mosque housing protesters. But there have been reports the death toll may be significantly higher. It's been difficult to get information out of Dara, which in recent days has seen some of Syria's largest protests in decades. Cell phone lines have been cut off. The city is under curfew. And the Syrian government has reportedly issued announcements telling residents they will be shot if they leave their houses. Amateur video has been posted online showing the bodies of protesters lying in the streets of Dara. In one video, the sound of gunfire fills the air. Amnesty International is reporting the Syrian government has also been sweeping up dissident students, intellectuals, journalists and activists across the country. Amnesty has identified 93 people who have been detained since March 8th. Many are still being held in unknown locations. Joining us on the phone from Damascus, Syria, is one of Syria's best-known human rights defenders, Haitham Mala. He's 80 years old, an attorney, former judge, founder of the Human Rights Association in Syria, released from prison earlier this month after being held for a year and a half on charges that he weakened national morale. He was previously imprisoned without being tried or charged between 1980 and 1987. He's been barred from leaving Syria since 2004. And we're joined by Haitham's son, uh, Lias Mala, who is a longtime human rights activist. He heads up the Haitham Mala Foundation, splitting his time between the United States and Brussels, from where he joins us now. Uh, we're going to begin in Damascus with Haitham Mala. What do you understand is taking place right now? Describe the crackdown. If I want to talk about uh, democracy, and uh, if we go back uh, for uh, 1949, we started as democracy regime in 45, but uh, the first dictator uh, military regime was created by American embassy in Damascus. You can see that in uh, the Game of, of Nations, written by my Scotland. Anyway, we are uh, from uh, 50 years under emergency case, the country ruled by uh, police, security intelligence services, and so on. And all laws is forgotten because we have emergency case. The regime and the secret police said we, uh, if we have uh, emergency case, so we, were, we, we do not need any law. So for that, they put uh, people in jail for nothing. We have now more than 4,000 prisoners in several jails without any charge. You see, uh, we have 15 branches of intelligence services. Each branch work in the same case uh, without any connected between all these branches. So the situation in Syria is very bad in this side, and uh, the people paid in the past high tax for free. I mean, in 18th, when I been in, the, in jail for, for seven years, when I was in the bar associations of lawyers, uh, have the asset council, the associations, all the, the bars, and uh, he created a private law to to make all the bars uh, follow Ba'ath Party and uh, something like this, or, or intelligence services. So uh, now we try to repeat, to ask for our freedom, for democracy in, in, uh, in Syria. And uh, we see what happened in Tunis, in Egypt. So uh, the people in Syria is a part of the Arabic people all over the, the, the Arabic world. Uh, it starts not only in uh, south on the, of Damascus, it starts in several cities in Syria, but the regime uh, always try to, uh, to, to use the high, high uh, uh, punishment uh, by, uh, by everything, by uh, army, by uh, secret police, by everything. And they arrest the people for nothing, for anything. Uh, you know what happened uh, uh, in front of uh, Minister of, Inter uh, of Interior, 
people try to ask for uh, to release their uh, uh, one of the, uh, their family in, in jail. So uh, thousands of uh, of secret police uh, punish them, uh, to, uh, pull them through the street till the car, and then took them to jail. So this is the background of of the system. They. They did not understand in politics. They did not understand in negotiate. They understand only in force. So uh, how we can be changed is a big question. Uh, well, Haithamala, you've been jailed repeatedly. Uh, in, back in 2006, you were jailed for 10 days for insulting the president. Uh, how has yeah. the government been able to uh, justify now uh, the, these emergency powers that go back uh, more than 40 years to 1963. What does it tell the people why they must keep these emergency powers? They have to move because we have also to pay the tax for free. Any nation, any nation all over the world pays the tax before us. And now we must believe that we must Pay the tax for free. There is no way because uh, this regime did not understand anything. Myself, I sent uh, several messages by several ways to President Bashar Assad, about eight, uh, eight messages, and also I met the high level of intelligence services or ministers. I talked with everybody. This way is wrong. We have to change. But still now, I have no answer. I wanted to bring Ayas Mala into the conversation, uh, president of the Haitha Mala Foundation, named for his father. Describe what is happening in Dara right now, what you understand, and the roots of the conflict there. Hi, Amy. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me. Uh, the uh, uh, problem in Dara started, uh, I want to say, almost a month ago, when uh, little kids were uh, spraying, uh, using spray paint on the wall. Uh, uh, the phrase down with the Assad regime, I believe. Uh, four of them from the same family, the Bayazid family, were arrested. Uh, those, we are talking about kids between the age of 10 and 13, 14 years old. Um, then uh, on the next day, uh, there was also a, um, uh, a group of students in elementary school, uh, again under the age of 15, you know. Uh, they were screaming in the in the yard in the school in the break time, uh, down with the Assad regime, and uh, ten of them were arrested uh, by the security services. So um, we had about uh, fourteen young children uh, detained uh, until today. I think uh, just yesterday we heard that some of them were released. Uh, so during that time, the the families uh, of those children uh, have. Uh, 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 put the, the authorities on notice that if they are not released, then uh, basically the population of Dara will go down to the street. Um, and sure enough, when uh, they did not uh, release them, uh, then we saw, I believe, uh, the first day, uh, we had about 10 to 15,000 people from Dara in the streets on March the 17th. On that day, six people were dead. Uh, the next day, um, we heard of uh, uh, the authorities using uh, gas uh, bombs to uh, disperse people, and uh, a child, 10 years old, uh, got hit with one of the bombs, and uh, he died the next day. Um, and uh, the, the death toll keep increasing, uh, obviously, as you, you mentioned earlier, when they uh, barged in the mosque of uh, um, uh, Al-Omari Mosque, uh, we had uh, numbers of, uh, of death, uh, uh, about 10 to 15 people, um, uh, lots of injured. Um, uh, the, the videos that we saw yesterday, uh, uh, as you mentioned, are horrible. We see dead bodies uh, laying down in the street. Uh, uh, and people are screaming for, for help, uh, medical help, doctors. Uh, a doctor who was treating uh, uh, people in the mosque of Al Omari uh, was also shot and killed. Um, this is the situation right now on the ground. The, the, the city is under siege, and uh, people are, don't have internet or, or, 
or uh, telephone uh, services uh, to use to, to uh, ask for help. Uh, media is not able to get in and cover, so we are relying on uh, people, you know, sneaking out those kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, videos uh, to, to follow up with the news. Well, Ayas Mala, your foundation in, in, in its reports has uh, made the point repeatedly that the Syrian regime has been able to cultivate an image to the rest of the world uh, uh, of being a moderate, uh, and enlightened uh, and secular uh, government, uh, while the reality is quite different. And you mentioned the Internet. Uh, could you talk about how it's attempted to totally clamp down on the uh, expression, free expression? Or, or dissidents within the country? Of course, uh, the, the Internet uh, has been um, um, very, uh, uh, you know, the people of Syria have been given very limited access to the Internet uh, for the past years. Uh, they did not have access to Facebook, to YouTube, uh, uh, to any of the social media that uh, the rest of the world enjoy. Um, then... Uh, um, even while they were uh, having those restrictions, uh, some of the Syrians' uh, activists uh, were able to use proxies and, and, and get around the, the limitation. Um, while they were doing that, uh, the, um, the security forces uh, still were monitoring what everybody has been uh, putting on uh, their pages uh, on, on Facebook uh, and other uh, websites. And uh, they have uh, threatened uh, families of uh, Syrians who live in exile abroad, uh, who have put things that uh, the government did not like, uh, either on Facebook or on, on other websites. Um, and uh, those who live inside Syria uh, have faced, uh, you know, major consequences where they were uh, detained, uh, harassed, uh, um, called for uh, interviews with the security services several times, and they were pushed uh, around to remove uh, even phrases that they put on their website or on, the, on their Facebook. Um, uh, and if they don't, then their families uh, were put in danger. Uh, not themselves, even. I mean, uh, they, they threatened the mother of of, uh, of uh, someone who uh, put something they did not like, did not like on their Facebook. They uh, threatened the child of someone who who did that. Uh, it's horrible. I mean, they they uh, really put the the population under siege. Um, so uh, later on, uh, after this uh, this uh, Arab world uh, uprisings that we've seen in uh, Tunisia and, and Egypt. Um, Syria decided to open up uh, Facebook. Uh, a lot of people thought that my, maybe this was uh, a, a good uh, gesture, you know, opening up the internet for the Syrian population. Uh, I believe the reason they did that because they were not able to monitor closely uh, when people use proxy, then it's hard to find out who is doing what. They can't follow IP addresses, and, and uh, they, the reason, in my opinion, they open it up so they can track people better. So, uh, so Ayas Mala, we now have the situation in Dara. Not clear how many people dead. Reuters reporting 25. Al Jazeera uh, saying witnesses told them something like 100 people dead, with the demands being end of emergency law, release of all political prisoners. About 10 percent of the people marched, 20,000 people of 250,000. And a major march is planned for tomorrow. What are that plans? What do you expect to see? Well, uh, we are expecting to see, like we saw on the on March 15th, uh, uh, you know, five different cities have, uh, you know, demonstrations. Uh, although they were small, uh, now with uh, with what's going on in Dara, we're expecting the numbers to be uh, to grow a lot uh, more, and uh, to be in more cities than just the five that started on March 15th. Um, I mean, it's horrible that the things that people are seeing and that the, the 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 messages I'm getting every night. I stay up till three, four o'clock in the morning, getting messages. Please do something. Please. I mean, people are begging for for uh, uh, people outside to spread the the, the, the news, you know, and, and spread the the messages so the international community will stand with the Syrian people and uh, not with this regime anymore.